G'day guys, welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the 9.3 by 62. So ever since I teased the fact that I bought a 9.3 by 62 rifle, people have been asking me to do a ballistics video on it. I felt like I probably could have put it in the 358 ballistic video that I did, um, but it doesn't quite fit with the 358s. It also doesn't quite fit with the 375s, so we're in a bit of ballistic no man's land. So today we're just gonna compare it to everyone's favorite, the 3006, because apparently there's nothing the 3006 can't do. Uh, it's got a very big fan base, a lot of followers, but I feel like more people should be interested in the 9.3 by 62. Just so you can wrap your head around the difference between the two, here is a photo of a 9.3 by 62 compared to a 3006 car case. Now, as you can see, they are almost the same length, but the 9.3 has its shoulder a fair bit further forward. It's a little bit more steep in its angle, and it has a larger powder capacity. So even if you were to compare this with a 35 Whalen, which is a 36 necked up to 358, then you would still get slightly better performance out of the 9.3. So for this first bit of comparison, I've just got two standard loads. Most people, when they hunt with a 30 they hunt with 180 grain loading. Some people do go up to the 220s, and we'll look at that in a little bit, but most people will stick to the 180s. A lot of people will shoot the 165s, but I feel like the 180s is more like a, a popular Samba hunting load for 306. So we'll whack that up on the bottom strip here compared to the 9.3 by 62 standard loading, which is a 286 grain bullet. Some companies make it as a 285, some companies make it as the original 286. So you'll see these interchangeably. One grain of weight is not really gonna change much at all when we look at this. So the 306 Springfield with a 180 grain soft point is going 2820 feet per second, which is 859 meters per second. It has a ballistic coefficient of 0.452 on the G1 scale. Compared that to our 9.3 by 62, which is 286 grain soft point going 2365 or 720 meters per second with a ballistic coefficient of 0 0.400 on the G1 scale. So looking at our two standard loads here, we can see at the muzzle, our muzzle energy for the 306 is 4304. The muzzle energy for the 9.3 is 4804. So that is quite a bit more energy. Now what also does 9.3 give you over the 306? It gives you a bigger frontal diameter, which means you're gonna punch a bigger hole. Now as we stretch this out to four and 500 meters, you'll see that the energy on both of the 306 and the 9.3 are fairly similar. If you are hunting with a 9.3, more than likely you were doing fairly close range stuff. And by that I want to say about 200 meters and in, 300 meters and in, something like that, is really where this cartridge shines. Past 500 meters, both of these cartridges uh, don't meet that benchmark of 1500 joules. So now if we picked two loadings that made this way more comparable, what would it look like? So we're gonna pick a 306 Springfield with a 220 grain round nose, I do know that there are a lot of Samba hunters out there who really want to use their 306 for some stopping power. They load up a big 220 round nose and they really put the hurt on the deer. Now we'll compare that to a 9.3 at 232 grains. So the 306 is going uh, 2450 feet per second and has muzzle energy of 3967. Whereas the 9.3, because it was bigger powder capacity, has um, the velocity at 2625 with 4800 joules of energy. Now, one thing that you will gain out of the 306, being that it's a smaller caliber, is you will get a slightly higher BC, but not a great deal. This is 300 compared to a 276, because to get a 220 into a 306 with your overall length and you're still having that powder capacity, you need to go over the round nose, which automatically has a fairly bad BC. So even though the 9.3 is physically wider and should have a much lower BC, because this particular bullet is a spy point, but the BC is much higher than what it normally would be if it was a round nose. So for that fact, you're getting pretty good ballistics out of the 9.3. The 9.3 has more energy all the way out to about seven, 800 meters, where both of those bullets kind of coincide with their energy ratings. So that's our ballistics out of the way. Now, a lot of people are gonna say, I don't wanna to go to a 9.3 because it kicks too hard. So let's have a quick look at some recoil ratings. So I've done these calculations off a seven and a half pound rifle, which is about three and a half kilos, which is about average for a 
hunting rifle, right? Most people don't really go much above four. And once you're getting down to like the, the low threes, end of the twos, like 2.9, whatever, that's a fucking light rifle. It's kind of like how I like my rifles, but it does kick harder. So seven and a half pound, I figure is about that rough medium zone where most people are gonna have their rifles. So with the 3006 shooting the uh, 220, so the highest one we can get, the most recoil we can get, is 27 foot pounds of energy. The 9.3 um, shooting the 286, which is the highest in today's data, is 38 foot pounds of energy. So that is a hell of a lot more. But then when you compare it to other things, it doesn't actually seem that bad. A lot of people are like, holy fuck, that's too much. It's too buku. I don't like it. It's really going to fucking hurt me. But then they'll go and shoot a 300 wind mag. So a 300 wind mag, standard loading at 180 grains, uh, going about 3,000 feet per second in the same weight rifle is going 36 foot pounds. So it's pretty much the same. So it doesn't recoil that much more, um, but yeah, it does recoil. Is it gonna recoil too much? I guess that's up to you. If you don't like recoil, probably not the cartridge for you. Um, but if you can, ha if you're, you know, if you're a bit of a bloke and you can handle a bit more recoil, consider stepping up to a 9.3 by 62 for your Samba hunting. It is a fantastic cartridge. It's used all over the world for Cape Buffalo, um, you know, crocodile. In Europe, they use it for massive wild boar um, and all their red stags and stuff like that. There's a lot of Samba hunters in Australia who use the 9.3 by 62. Um, it's used in the top end for water buffalo, scrub bull, camels. Um, you name it, it's probably been shot with it. The 9.3 um, really needs to get the recognition that it deserves as a fantastic big game cartridge. And the reason why it's so good is it's giving you pretty much magnum performance, but not in a magnum cartridge. So you fits in a standard long action. Um, it hits extremely fucking hard. There is an excellent selection of good quality hunting balls because of the fact that it is used a lot in Europe and Africa for hunting big game, a lot of companies have made excellent projectiles for it. So if you're hand loading, there's any number of projectiles you can throw into that car case. Now when it comes to factory offerings, yes, the 3006 is way more readily available. Every single gun shop you ever go to ever in Australia is gonna have 3006. It may not have it in the loads that you want though. Um, getting a 220 factory loading might be a bit hard. Um, so you're probably gonna be sitting with those 180s, so just bear that in mind. But I've found 9.3 by 62 to be in a lot of gun shops. I wouldn't say all of them, and I wouldn't say they have a fairly good selection, but uh, most gun shops I go into will have 9.3 by 62 stocked. A lot of the time it's PPU. You know, a lot of people shit on PPU ammunition, and I don't know why PPU ammunition is actually fairly fucking good. Um, it's pretty popular in Europe, which is where it's from. Um, for some reason here, you know, if it's not Winchester or Remington, people think it's shit. I personally think that both Winchester and Remington make terrible ammunition. So going to a European brand is not really a big deal for me. One more benefit out of the 9.3 over the 3006 is because it is a wider bore, you can have a shorter barrel without sacrificing as much velocity as if you had the 3006 cut down, for instance. So that makes a lighter, handier rifle. It really shines in an 18 to 20 inch barrel. Um, you're not really losing that much velocity and you're retaining everything good about that cartridge. If you go to an 18 or 20 inch 3006, you're really, really neutering that cartridge and it's not that great. I did a separate version of this video that's posted over on Patreon where I compared it to a hell of a lot of cartridges including 7 Rem Mag, 375 H&H, 6.5 Creedmoor, 308, 708 and I touched on a few different things including sectional densities which we didn't talk about in this video. So if you're keen to see some more ranting um, like that, head over to Patreon. Yes, I am still going to work on that 9.3 that I bought. Just a quick update on that. Um, the recoil pad, as I suspected, is absolutely fucking dog shit. I don't usually shoot prone, particularly with uh, rifles that are relatively high recoiling compared to others. Ergo, 9.3 will kick a hell of a lot more than my 22 250. Um, however, I did for this, uh, just to get it zeroed in. And um, yeah, it kicked the shit out of me, and that's purely because the recoil pad on that stock is absolutely dog shit. And the bases and rings that came on that rifle um, are a hell of a lot higher than what I would need. So instead of having a cheek weld where the comb of the rifle is in my 
cheekbone, which is where you're supposed to have it, so your face can rock with the rifle. I had my jawbone on it um, to get my head up to see through the scope, but if you have a correctly fitting rifle, that recall can be mitigated quite well. So I'm still gonna work on that rifle. That will be coming up in future videos. I have a lot of work on it, so that's probably on the back burner for now. So anyway, I'll get to that when I get to that. That's about all I've got for today's video. I hope you got something out of that. I hope that answers all of your questions about 9.3 by 62. If you have any more, drop me in the comments below. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time and hooroo.